and off. We're given a link to the binary, a link to the source, and we can connect to the program with netcat. Uh, maybe I'll just start by connecting to the program with netcat so you can see what that looks like. So we have a menu, we can add a recipient. We can send a message to a recipient. And we can exit the app and give feedback. All right, so let's look at the C code. There's 10 entries in the array that are of this Entry type right here, a name which is eight bytes long. Note the name length of 32 up here doesn't match. That's gonna be important. And a message which is 64 bytes long, that does match. So we have this entry type. There's our print menu. Our feedback is eight characters long. We have 10 of these entries. We print the menu. Then if it's a one, we can get the new recipient's name like we saw. That matches, so we're not gonna have an overflow there. We can send a message to a recipient. It does check to make sure we don't go past the end of the array. It doesn't check for negative numbers. Uh, that's gonna be below the bottom of the stack, so that's not as helpful, even though that is a bug and it should check for both directions. Then here, this is the important bug. When we exit, we get feedback 32. It does actually put a null byte in position seven, um, which really means that we have seven bytes of feedback. The eighth byte is null, and then we have 24 more bytes that we can, we can do something with. All right, so I've loaded this into Ghidra. And I did some work here in Ghidra to make it match up with the source code, because it doesn't have those variable names, so I rename things. You can right click and rename a variable. And over here, I actually added a data type. So I made a new structure. And I'll show you the one that I actually filled in. That is this entry T, which has the eight character name and the 64 character message. Uh, then when I retyped to an array of 10 um, entries. You'll see here it like correctly figures out that this is uh, referring to a name. And I've got feedback here. Here's the message. Okay, so let's look at where this feedback is. Look at this F get S. And you can see that feedback is at 12 bytes below the frame pointer. I made a little map uh, to show. So we have feedback is at 12 bytes below the frame pointer. The frame pointer has the old value of the frame pointer. And then above that will be the return address, which will be 20 bytes above feedback. Since we can overwrite 32 bytes, we'll be able to overwrite this return address. Now keep in mind that we can only put like seven bytes here. So I have six bytes of code there. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, so a couple other things I did with this executable. So I did check sec. So what check sec does is it looks at the security features of the executable. What's exciting about this one is there's no stack canary. So when we overflow uh, feedback, we're not going to have to have an information leak, a random number there that would block our way. Uh, the stack is executable. Most, most modern executables don't have that. So we'll actually be able to put code on the stack and execute it. And there's no position independent executable. So when we look at the address of code in the executable, we'll be able to actually use that. That'll enable us to do return oriented programming. So usually none of these things three things are true in a modern compiled executable, and that's gonna make this challenge a lot easier. So the other thing we'll do is Rob Gadget. So Rob Gadget looks at the end of function, so we can return to the end of a function 
and hopefully find some useful things there. What we would really like is uh, like a jump ESP. Um, I don't see any of those. What we do have is jump RAX. So if RAX is in a useful place, then that's going to be good for us. So in order to figure out what is in RAX, we could look at the assembly real hard. Uh, what I chose to do instead is I just executed the code. So this is where I'm going to execute the code against the remote server. Here I'm going to just execute the code locally. I hit pause. That's going to enable me to connect to this program in GDB. So I'm paused there. I come down here. I can say GDB and connect to that process. 183776. And now I need to set a breakpoint. So I'm going to set a breakpoint at the end of the volume function. So the end of the volume function is around here. Come on. No. Go back. There's Vuln. All right, so 40140E. So you can set a breakpoint there. 40140E. Continue. And we'll come to our other, we'll unpause that. And now here we are at the end of the program. And so the good news is that RAX, if you look at that EB4, is actually very close to RSP. So that's what, 14. So it is 20 bytes below the stack pointer, which means it's actually pointing to the beginning of feedback. Now, why is it pointing to the beginning of feedback? If we look what happens here, fgetS is going to actually return the address of feedback as its return value, and so that's going to persist through this return. So we actually have the address of feedback. So we can actually jump to the beginning of feedback. So that's why here in my little map, I said at the feedback, I was going to put subtract 68 from RAX and jump to RAX. Now, in order to make that shellcode small, I needed this number to be less than uh, 128 to make this subtraction and jump be only six bytes long and not have that null byte from the end of feedback uh, bother me. And so that actually lands me uh, only going back 68 bytes to the message sent to the ninth user. And I can put 64-bit shellcode there. So I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm going to connect to the server and not locally. I add 10 people, so that's going to be spots 0 through 9 in the array. I add 10 people named the doctor because uh, I read to the end of the menu, number three is exit the app, I send choice one, I wait till it says name, I send the doctor, then I read the entire menu. Now I'm going to send a message. I'm going to send a message to person nine, and I send to them the 64-bit shellcode. So that's what I showed you in the memory map. That's 48 bytes long. I printed out the length of that. Then we exit the app and it's going to ask for feedback. The feedback I'm going to send is that subtract 68 from RAX, jump to RAX. I assemble that using Pwn tools, and then I add enough nulls to get me to 32 bytes. Um, then, actually not to 32, excuse me, to 20 bytes, because at 20 bytes is where the return address is. This return address is the address of that jump RAX. So I send that, then I switch to interactive mode. So what should happen uh, when I do this is I connect to the remote server. It overflows the buffer, changes the return address to the beginning of feedback, 
feedback subtracts 68 from Rx, which jumps down to the ninth message. And then that is the shell code. So I should get a shell on the remote server. It sends the things. I now have a shell on the remote server. I can cat flag.txt. And I have pivoted for the win. And there's my flag.